Okay, hey guys, this is Pure Fall in 33 minutes. Um, just to say, I've had a really hectic day, so I have tried to record this, but I've recorded it during the day, so it starts and stops a little bit. I have done my best for you. Please make sure you watch the P1, P2, P3 uh, videos, especially P3. You need all of P3 trick for P4. And good luck with your exam. I've literally tried to do the best with all the content here. Have fun. Um, and yeah, have a blast. Okay, so this is the formula sheet that you get in Pure 4. Remember that you can also use anything from P1, P2, and P3. Always look at the trig stuff from P3, and you've got some extra, in, extra integration here. Now, because you know that integration is the opposite of differentiation, remember you, we could always go backwards as well. Okay, so chapter one, proof. Now, with proof, if you haven't learned it by now, don't learn it. All you need to learn is one thing to get a mark. If it says, okay, because we're doing proof by contradiction. So to get that one mark, remember, if it says prove by contradiction that, you know, root 2 is um, irrational, to get that one mark, you have to make sure that you write an assumption. So you say, assume root 2 is and you do the opposite if it says irrational what's the opposite of irrational rational okay if it says prove that it's an odd number well what's the opposite of odd um it, or you could just say you prove that it's even or you could say you prove that it's not odd okay so you're going to get one mark for writing that assumption um statement and then you'll be able to go from there okay next chapter is algebraic fractions so remember something to remember this if they have like the x plus 1 squared on the denominator, for example, you know that this is a over x plus 1. Then remember, you've got your b over x plus 1 squared and then your c over x minus 4. It does not matter which order you put this in. Now, remember, there's two ways to do this. Um, when you do it, whatever's on top, I personally, like, so if I had 3x plus 4, for example, I like to compare coefficients. So I know, what do I multiply this by to get um, the same denominator as this? I know I need to multiply x by x plus 1 and x minus 4, yeah? Then for b, what do I need to multiply this by to get the same denominator? It's just x minus 4. Then, for part C, I need to multiply this by x plus 1, all squared, okay? Now, instead of expanding all this out, I'm a bit clever, um, but if you need to expand it all out, please do. But remember, what is going to give you 4? You know that you're going to get b times minus 4 is going to give you a number without um, an x, okay? It's just a constant. You know that a, when it's multiplied by this 4, and then c is going to be multiplied by 1, okay? So you can be a bit smart. You don't have to write the x squareds every time. Um, and then you can compare coefficients. That's how you find it. Normally, they use this, these types of questions in, um, like, the integration, differentiation. Sometimes they have it like this. Uh, always remember, though, that if the denominator has the same degree, if this is a cube and this is a cube, this is improper, okay? Highly suggest watching the other videos, P1, P2, P3. Um, and that, remember, if this is an improper fraction, you need to convert it to a mixed fraction first. This needs to be done. You need to do the arm of silly bully, yeah? You need to do the division first before you can do partial fractions. Partial fractions does not work for improper fractions, okay? So that means the degree on the numerator, this needs to be an x squared. It needs to be less than. It can't be the same or bigger than the denominator. Okay, so then, chapter three, what we have, chapter three is coordinate geometry, but basically it's just parametric equations, isn't it? Now, parametric, oh my God, equations. Right, so when we're doing parametric, we have x equals y equals, okay? So when we are substituting, this is all, essentially, sometimes you have to draw curves, which is fine. You're going to have y equals something in terms of t, uh, x equals something in terms of t. If you need to draw a curve, I mean, just literally write your x and y and your t, and you just substitute stuff in, okay? If it wants a Cartesian equation, a Cartesian equation means we want it in the form y equals with x's in it, 
okay? It's a case of rearranging. So if we had x equals t plus 2 and y equals t squared, we know that what does t equal? x minus 2. And we're literally going to substitute that into y. So we're going to get x minus 2 squared. Like, if you break it down, it doesn't matter how complicated it is, okay? It is just rearranging stuff, okay? And this is what you have to think about it. Um, and then, so something you have to remember as well is that, like, for example, um, the domain of when it's in y in the form of y equals x, etc. So f of x, essentially. This is the range of when it's x equals t something. So the range of this is the domain of the actual equation, okay? And the range of the y one with the t's here is the range of the y equals x equation. Did that make any sense? No. Sorry, I felt like I didn't explain that very well. Okay, so once you put it in Cartesian form, okay, Cartesian form means we want y equals and we're going to have some stuff with x in. Right, to find the range of this and the domain of this equation. The range of the Cartesian is the range of the one with the y's and the t's in, okay? The domain of the Cartesian is the range of the equation of x with the t's in, okay? Okay, so um, chapter four, binomial, so easy. There's a few things you have to remember. They love to give us questions um, where we have two plus three x, for example. And I don't know, let's just say this is to the power of negative a half. It doesn't matter what it's to the power of two. In P4, this has to be one. It has to be one. If this isn't one, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so you have to divide everything. What are we dividing everything by here to get this to be one? Two, okay? So if we divide everything by two, that means I'm taking, I'm taking out half, right? So, if I take out a half, I get 1 plus 3 over 2x. Now, something that people always forget is that if I take this half outside, unless you have to put it to the negative, minus 1 over 2, okay? So, what is a half to the negative 1 over 2? We know that this is going to be positive 4, lots of 1 plus 3 over 2x. If you have to take a minute to do it step by step, please do, okay? Please do. It's really important. Now, the other thing is sometimes you will find um, that it will say to you, expand, simplify. First, you've got to do partial fractions. Then you've um, got to use binomial. There's all sorts or... Again, it's just algebra <coughs> manipulation, okay? So if you've expanded this, and then, you know, they say, right, so this becomes now what? Um, multiplied by 1 plus 3x, let's say, okay? And then it's like, find, find the value of, um, you know, the x squared term. This is like just pure 2 all over again, okay? So just make sure you know what you're doing there. And expand, simplify, etc. Then sometimes you also have to do partial fractions before doing the expansion. That's also okay. Make sure that um, you're happy doing it. I'm sure you will be. Okay, next up, this chapter is differentiation. So we've technically got two rules, okay? We've got, when we've got our parametric again, so again, if we have y in terms of. Um, t's, x in terms of t's, okay, and then we need to differentiate this. Now, remember, to find dy by dx, we do dy by dt, so we differentiate y uh, with respect to t, okay, and we divide this by the differential of, we differentiate x with respect to t, because what you find, when we divide that, we're now going to get the differential of y over the differential of x, because this is essentially divided by dt, or multiply it by the uh, inverse of dt by dx, okay? Because this is, they cancel, 
And this is like when we do, you know, like when they do the rates and change, rates, rates of change. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. Uh, my head's all over the place today. Change in rates. Um, however, that's one type. Then the second type is implicit. Now, I love implicit. So this is when sometimes you have like, for example, 2x plus y equals y squared minus 5. And every, we differentiate, this is normal, so 2x differentiated a 2. Y differentiated as 1, but instead of writing 1, because we differentiated a y, we put dy by dx. Then y squared differentiated is 2y, and because it was a y, we put dy by dx. And then minus 5 differentiated is 0. I would move the dy by dx's on one side, so that's minus dy by dx. Factor out the dy by dx... Uh, 2y minus 1 equals 2, and then obviously divide. So actually, my differential is 2 over 2y minus x. Something they love to do, again, pure free, they love to use maybe a uh, product rule, you know, 2xy, so that you know this is your v, this is your u, okay? They love quotient rule, they love chain rule, they will have all of that in it. Please do watch that P3 um, video. And again, as always, it will tell you about the coordinates, um, you know, don't forget stationary points, the gradient equals zero, if you're finding if it's a maximum or minimum. Everything you've done in P1, P2, P3, you need to know, okay? This is just the extra stuff on top. Okay, integration. So this one is a really big chapter because we have to cover a lot of things. So first of all, we have the area of the um, curve when we have the parametric equations. Now, this is really simple if you understand, you know, we're going to integrate y with respect to x, okay? But remember, parametric, we have to manipulate this. You have to use the numbers that you have. So you will be given x equals cos t and y equals minus cos of t, okay? You can see we've got t's. What happens when we differentiate each one? If I differentiate x, I get dx by dt. So I'm going to differentiate x with respect to t. And, and then when we differentiate cos, remember sine, cos, minus sine, minus cos. So if we are differentiating cos, we get to minus sine. This is going to give me minus sine of t, okay? Now remember, this is the form I'm looking at. So all I'm doing is manipulation. What do I have here? I have dx. How do I get dx? I multiply by both sides by dt. So I get minus sine dt, okay? This is what dx equals. So I'm going to substitute that into here. Right, and then my y, I don't need to change. I get minus cos t multiplied by minus sine dt, which is going to give me um, positive. Now, this is where P3 trig is trig, trig, trig. There's no chapter of trig, but we love trig, okay? Because look, minus cos of t is my y multiplied by minus sine of t with respect to t. So then I end up getting a positive cos t sine t with respect to t. You don't know how to do this, but what do you know that this is? I know you're not going to believe it. Double angle formula. I'm just as shocked as you. Remember, 2 cos t sine t. This is what? This is cos of 2t, isn't it? Okay, so actually, because we don't have, we've only got one and this is two, we need, this is a half cos of 2t, which you know how to integrate. Please double check all of your P3 trig. You will need to do, use that. The hint here is we don't know how to integrate essentially a product. Uh, we do buy parts, but we know that cos and t keep going on forever and ever and ever and ever. So if there is a trig formula we can use, we need to use that. Right, okay, and then we have the next one. We have volumes of revolution. So this one is just really easy. And you've got to remember that what we're doing is we're going to integrate. And um, with the volumes of in revolution, we integrate. We have to multiply by pi and we have to square y. Okay, so it's y squared with respect to x. So basically you just do everything the same, but just remember to square it before you um, integrate it. Now, sometimes if they have parametric, you do exactly the same again, but square the y, okay? Um, watch the video if you need more information on that. Uh, integration by substitution. Now, I don't think I... Um, I don't really use this one as much. However, 
you've got to remember that when we substitute, it's the same as the parametric. You know what we did earlier? So if you have the integration of x root x, uh, sorry, 2x plus 5 with respect to x, okay? What's going to be the easiest thing to substitute? And it's going to be u, isn't it? Let u equal 2x plus 5. So that means we've got to change everything into u's, du's, etc. Because if u is 2x plus 5, I now need to use manipulation. Remember, p4 is manipulate, 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 okay? So, first of all, you need an x. How on earth are you going to get an x from this? Well, you rearrange it. u minus 5 over 2 equals x. So instead of writing x here, what are you going to write? You're going to write the u minus 5, because essentially we're converting everything in u's. It will say in the question, by the way, if you need to do this by substitution. Then we're going to have, um, what's this one? We're going to have root u, which is also known as u to the half. Okay? So we're going to have u minus 5 over 2 multiplied by u to the half. And then we still have a dx. We can't have a dx. I need a du. So what do I have to do? I can differentiate u with respect to x, which gives me 2. And then I can rearrange this, so I get du over 2 equals dx. Okay, now, here we go, du over 2. The most important thing, that is a funny looking you, the most important thing that people forget is to expand and simplify this first. So technically, I'm going to get the integration of a quarter, lots of, um, and I'm going to get u times u to the half, which is u to the power of... 3 over 2, sorry my brain's not working, minus 5 over 4 u to the half with respect to u. Then once you integrate this etc, um, at the end, once you know what u is, uh, you just uh, substitute the x back in once you've done it all. Don't forget, or actually, let's say, remember plus c. Okay, so that's integration by substitution, it will tell you when to do that. My next one is my favourite one actually, integration by parts. So. This is essentially when you have a product, okay? Um, for example, x squared ln x with respect to x. Now, we have a product, but we're gonna have a terminating product. And what I mean by that is this x squared here will differentiate to 2x, which will differentiate to two. Okay, so it will kind of get rid of that. Now, sometimes when the product doesn't terminate, that's when you have those proofy ones. I don't know if you watched my video. There's, they love doing, uh, sometimes they do e to the x, sine to the x, and actually this forms a loop. And of course it will, because they keep differentiating and integrating to the same or different things. So with this one, now, I always do vu, so vdu minus the integral um, I don't actually use a formula for this. I just use my magic square. Okay, so I have V and I have U. Now, when I think about this, if I put V here, I'm differentiating here. I can differentiate and I get 2X. Brilliant. <coughs> but if I put ln of X here, I need to integrate it. Now, ln of X itself is actually, by the way, ln of X is the same as doing this by parts, but doing 1 times ln of X. Whenever you see ln of X, ideally, this needs to be your V. Okay, so that when you put this in here, straight away, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get 1 over x differentiates to, uh, oh my golly, ln of x differentiates to 1 over x. However, x squared integrates to x cubed over 3. And then um, I do my magic number 7. So I get ln x. Uh, if you don't do it this way, I'm please ignore it. I think the formula is um, the integration of u d, it's u v minus the integration of v multiplied by du by dx dx, okay? And what, for me, this magic square works. So I'm now going to get um, x cubed ln x over 3 minus, and then this part of my 7, which is the integral of x cubed over 3 times 1 over x. So with respect to x, that's just going to give me x squared over 3. So now I'm going to have x cubed ln x all over 3 minus, and this is the integral of x cubed over 3, increased power by 1, 3 divided by the new power, 9, and then we're going to put plus c.
Okay, so make sure that is what you do. I think with terms of integration, that is practically it. This one is a long chapter, but the last part of the chapter is sometimes they give you the partial fractions. Make sure you put this as partial fractions first and then integrate separately because then you can have the integration of A over something plus the integration of B over something. Normally you get a LUN or a, a LIN, sorry, or whatever. And I think that's about it. Oh my God, no. Solving differential equations is also in this chapter. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, the last thing on um, integration is differential equations, okay? And it's solving differential equations. For example... Okay, so um, we have... Um, 1 plus x squared dy by dx equals x tan y. Okay, whenever we have an equation like this, what you want, you want y's on one side with the dy, you want x's on the other side with the dx's, and then we would integrate them. So how will that look? Now, we can see here that straight away, I need to rearrange this, okay? So in fact, I can divide both sides by one plus x squared. So I get dy by dx equals x times tan y over one plus x squared, okay? And now because this is a time, I can also divide by tan y. So I get one over tan y uh, dy by dx equals x over 1 plus x squared. And then multiply both sides by dx. So 1 over tan y dy equals x over 1 plus x squared with respect to x. Now you want to go ahead and integrate them. Okay? So you know the integration of 1 over tan. This is the same as saying the integration of cot y. Now the integration of cot y, this is in your formula sheet. Okay, then on the other side, remember one of them's got to have a plus C somewhere. And sometimes remember plus C, if we're doing LUNs, write it as LUN K. Okay, again, it's all about rearranging. Then X plus one over X squared, what do we know? Essentially, this is the same as um, X multiplied by one, uh, one over um, 1 over 1 plus x squared we know is ln of 1 plus x squared divided by the differential of the bracket. So divide by, differentiate 1 plus x squared is actually 2x. So if I divide by this differential, that's going to cost, I'm going to get half. So a half ln 1 plus x squared plus c. And then cut y actually, in fact, integrates to ln of sine y. Okay, now, because they're all in LUN, change your uh, C to a LUN K. It's the same thing, but just makes our life easier. You'd use log laws to manipulate this, etc., to get rid of the LUNs. So make sure um, you just watch out for those. As you can see, with all of this integration, well, a lot of it is manipulation. Okay, vectors. If you have not studied vectors yet, don't bother learning it for tomorrow. If you, um, it's okay, you can still get an A without knowing vectors because normally it is distributed nicely the mark. If you have studied vectors, you would know this covers a lot of contact, uh, content from GCSE. In the book, there are literally 30 summaries, okay? Um, summary of key points. I'm going to try and do this as uh, quickly as I can. Okay, so I'm going to try and break this down as much as possible. So as we know, vectors um, is a quantity and it has magnitude and direction. Okay, what does magnitude mean? A magnitude is the length. And I know it's a bit confusing, but we call that the modulus. Okay, so the modulus of A is the length of A. Okay, and you know when we're finding um, the magnitude... It's like the um, Pythagoras, just like always, okay? And what else do we need to know? Um, so the vector minus P and P will have the same length. They'll just be different directions, okay? A vector is parallel, as you know, if we have a factor of um, the same vector. And a unit vector 
is a vector with a modulus or a magnitude of one. Modulus, magnitude both mean the length, okay? So unit vector is when the modulus or magnitude of the vector equals one. A few other little facts just to be aware of is that um, there is a triangle law for addition. So AB plus BC will give us the vector AC, okay? Um, when we subtract vectors, it's the same as adding the negative. So like vector A minus vector B is the same as doing A plus the negative of B. We should know that anyway. Adding vectors together will always give us a zero vector. So if we add the vector AB, AB plus the vector BA, okay, because you can see there are two different directions. This should always give you zero, okay? So this is something that we need to know. We know multiplication, addition, so let's just go over a few examples. So if this is 2, 1, and this is 3, 0. If we multiply, you literally multiply like, not, you know, not the top row, but the top column and the, the top row, the bottom row, etc. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 0, 0. Then also you guys know that 2, 1 plus... Uh, 3, 0, it's the same. We do the same with the columns. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay. You've got to remember that I, J, and K are represented by 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and J is 0, 0, 1. Remember, if I ask the question, you know, if you have like 2, 1, Four, and they say to you, representing that in J's, you know, I, J, K, you know this is 2I, J, and 4K, okay? This would be just something that we need to know. And for 2D, it's just I and J, where I is 1, 0, and J is 0, 1, okay? Nice and easy, because you know we're going to mix between the two. Um, what I was saying about the modulus earlier, remember, it doesn't matter if it's x, y, or z. The modulus, which is the length, essentially, we just use Pythagoras. So it's the square root of um, what's inside. So, for example, if we use this vector, 2, 1, it's the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared. Okay, if the vector had, if uh, we're looking at 3D, the modulus of this is the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Okay? These are just all the kind of points. Now... A unit vector in the direction of A is the vector A divided by the modulus of A. Okay, and what do I mean by that? So, for example, let's say A was um, 2, 1. Okay, if I'm looking for the unit vector in the direction of A, what is my modulus of A? My modulus of A is the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is... Um, root 5 okay so then a over the modulus of a is going to give me 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5 okay so remember that um, the next thing we need to know as well oh just a few handy things if we want the a b this is the same as doing the origin to b minus the origin for a do you know the best thing I can recommend for you when you're doing vectors is draw pictures Draw, um, literally, sorry, draw pictures. Like, it is the best thing to do. Um, you know as well, you know, like, when there's a given ratio. Uh, this is like a GCSE question, really. You know, you've got to find here what's the ratio and they don't give it you. You know, make sure you can label it like um, lambda and mu. Um, and you always have to use two directions. So, like... If you start from here and you go this way, there would be no point from you starting here and then going back this way. It's the same thing, but opposite. But you could go this way and here. Okay, so remember it's about getting two different ways. Um, what else do you need to know? Um, distance between the origin to a point is literally the modulus. Um, unit vectors are 3Ds, we know. Ah. So, if a vector makes an angle, the cos of the angle x is x over the modulus of a, okay? And that's our vector a being, for example, um, like 4, 5, 6, 
Okay, cos of x, where x is like the first one, x, y, z, if we want it against like the x axes, is going to be, um, you know, 4, 5, 6 over the modulus of a. If, um, so x, so this would be 4 over the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared. And then you'd inverse cos, right? And that would give you the angle. Then... Um, you can always compare coefficients with vectors. What else do we need to know? Ah, a vector equation of a straight line through the point A, okay, but it has a position vector um, parallel to B. Remember, R equals A plus lambda B. Um, if a vector passes through point C and D, then you're going to have r equals c plus lambda d minus c. Now, what's the difference is that it will just be b if it's parallel because the gradient is the same. If it passes through the points, okay, we need to work out essentially. It's, it's a bit like the gradient. Dot product. I don't think you're given this at all. So the dot product or the scalar product is a dot b actually means the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b cos of theta and theta is the angle between our a and b respectively um if a and b are the position vectors of the point then cos of the angle is a dot b so you've got to remember you can rearrange this cos of the angle equals a dot b over the modulus of a modulus of b um if a and b are parallel, then actually the modulus of a and the modulus of b is going to equal the same as the modulus of a squared. Uh, what else do we need to know? That the acute angle between two intersecting straight lines is also given by this cos here, but it's the modulus of this then. Okay, so two straight lines intersect. The acute angle will be that. And two lines are skew. Remember, you've got to prove skewness in two ways. They've, you've got to show that they're not parallel, so they're not a factor of each other, and they do not intersect. And they do not intersect, okay? If they do not intersect, we've also got to do um, the dot product. So this is a real overview of everything. Um, what I am going to do now is I'm going to probably show you an example. Um, just, I felt like the vectors, there's just so much to kind of cover. Okay, guys, that is the end. Um, God, there was a lot there. Uh, if you do want to go over vectors, though, do have a look at some of the um, past exam questions. There'll be loads on um, YouTube. And good luck with your exam. Sending you all the best. Um, let me know how it goes.